We're taking a break from our US tour and bringing it back to the great white north. Oh, Canada. We are the second largest country in the world, which only means we have room for some of the scariest legends and stories. I'm your host, Andrew, and here I compiled a list of your top 10 scary Canadian urban legends that will keep you up. At a number 10 spot, we have the Headless Nun. It all began during the mid 18th century struggle between the Acadians and the British. In an effort to fend off the British, a French fort was constructed at a cove located in a place known today as French Fort Cove in New Brunswick. Among the Acadians transported to this location was a nun known as Sister Mary. Sister Mary was born in France and requested of her superiors that she be sent to Canada to help the Acadians. She was deeply devoted to the care of the ill and despaired for their well being. Sister Marie was in charge of a fund that was set up to assist the needs of the families and it is said that she buried the money for safekeeping. One fateful night, while returning from assisting a very ill person, Sister Mary was attacked by an unknown person or persons. They demanded that she reveal the location of the buried money. Her unwillingness to cooperate with the attackers resulted in Sister Mary being beaten and her head was severed from her body. The head was never found, hence the headless nun. Sister Marie's body was then returned to France, but her spirit remained here, unable to rest until her head was buried with her body. Then for years after this incident, late night visitors to the area have reported being approached by Sister Marie's spirit, asking where her head is. Some say she asked them to help find her head, while others claim that she has found it and carries it in her arms, in which she just asked them to bury it with her body. If you're brave enough to visit the area, be sure to bring a friend, as it's said that you should never visit the headless not alone. Number 9, The Baldoon Mystery. The Baldoon Mystery takes place in the Baldoon settlement near present day Wallaceburg in southern Ontario. This is where a group of Scottish families settled but faced many difficulties due to the swampy land and disease that was roaming the area. Among the original settlers, there was the McDonald family who showed much struggle beginning in 1829. According to accounts, this first incident happened when poles from the roof structure of the barn began to topple towards the ground, sending these deadly wooden daggers flying and sticking out of the ground. No probable source for the incident was ever found and the poles were installed in such a way that they couldn't easily come loose, leaving the possibility of an unseen force with ill intent. As the strange occurrences continued to plague the farm, unexplained sounds would be heard from the McDonald family at all hours of the day and night. The family would often hear the sounds of footsteps throughout the house, but especially in the kitchen, which sounded like the rhythmic marching of many men preparing for war. But when the family went to investigate, the noises would abruptly stop, leaving no explanation for them. Another disturbing incident involved one of their children, a baby sitting in a wooden cradle, which suddenly started to rock violently from side to side, despite the efforts of three men there to stop it. And it didn't stop there. Rocks were thrown in the exterior of their home each and every single day, which would sometimes shatter windows. As well, fires would show up around the property as if someone was trying to burn down the place, but they would be so random that they didn't even look like it was intentional. They would attribute the hauntings to a witch who cursed the home and the land, and would later enlist the aid of a woman who told them to make a bullet out of silver and shoot a black feathered goose which would ultimately end the curse. After doing just that, they no longer had any more disturbances and we can say that the curse was finally lifted. Number 8, Oak Island. The Oak Island mystery is a series of stories explaining about a buried treasure and unexplained objects that have been found on or near Oak Island in Nova Scotia. Theories about the artifacts present on the island range from pirate treasure to Shakespearean manuscripts to the Holy Grail or even the Ark of the Covenant. Various items have surfaced over the years that were found on the island, some of which have since been carbon dated and found to be hundreds of years old. However, no significant main treasure site has been found there. The site consists of digs by numerous individuals and groups of people, and the original shaft known as the Money Pit was dug by early explorers. A curse on the treasure is said to have originated more than a century ago, stating that seven men will die in the search for the treasure before it is found. And so far, there's been six deaths confirmed, with the most recent one coming from 2014. So we're really just waiting for the seventh one. Doesn't that sound terrible? Attempts to remove the water from the money pit have been unsuccessful and theories about an elaborate drainage system from the ocean beaches to the pit have been proposed. However, a scientific study conducted by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in 1995 concluded that the flooding was caused by a natural interaction between the island's freshwater lens and tidal pressures in the underlying geology, refuting the man-made tunnel theory. Regardless, Oak Island is a mystery that we may never be able to solve unless someone is willing to risk their life just so we can get that seventh death. Again, that sounds absolutely terrible. Number seven, Pit Lake's Lost Gold Mine. 
Pit Lake's Lost Gold Mine is a legendary lost mine said to be near Pit Lake, British Columbia. The supposed wealth has held the imagination of people worldwide for more than a century. The story of Pit Lake Gold begins in 1858, the year of the Fraser Canyon Gold Rush, where a number of maps were published in San Francisco promoting the gold fields of British Columbia. The mysterious riches are known as the Slough Mitch's Lost Mine or the Lost Creek Mine. Ever since the years of the Fraser Canyon Gold Mine, prospectors and adventurers have been looking for the mine and gold rush rumors have evolved into legends repeated and enriched over time. The mine was said to be located on the north side of Pitt Lake where an Indian brought quote a good prospect of gold which he states he found in a little stream on the north side of Pitt Lake to New Westminster creating great excitement in the city. Despite many expeditions to find the mine, it remains a legend with many different variations of the story. Some say that it was found by a Native American while others say a white man named Walter Jackson who before he died wrote a letter to a friend describing the location of the mine and the treasure, describing it as yellow with gold and millions practically at the surface. Even after a century of searching, the mine remains undiscovered, which just adds more to its allure and its overall mystique. In the hump red list, we have the Ghost Ship of Northumberland Strait. The Ghost Ship of Northumberland Strait is a legend steeped in centuries of Canadian ghost lore. According to the legend, the Ghost Ship is a beautiful schooner with three or four masts, all adorned with pure white sails. This ship sails ablaze within the Northumberland Strait, which is a body of water that separates Prince Edward Island from Nova Scotia and New Brunswick. The legend dates back at least 200 years and it is said that the ship appears before a northeast wind and is a forewarning of an extreme storm. Over the years there have been numerous sightings of this ghost ship with people describing the distinctive outlines of the ship's mast and Phantom crew members climbing them before the vessel supposedly either completely burns, sinks or just vanishes out of thin air. In 1900 a group of sailors boarded a small rowboat in Charlottetown Harbor and raced towards the Phantom ship in order to rescue the crew only to have the ship vanish. Then in January 2008, a 17 year old claimed to have seen the legendary Phantom ship in Tatamaguchi Bay, describing it as a bright white and gold ship. While the legend of the ghost ship has captivated the imagination of many, some have offered natural explanations for the phenomenon. In 1905, a New Brunswick scientist proposed that the legend may have arisen due to the natural electrical phenomenon known as St. Elmo's Fire that has been subject to the interpretation as the flaming rigging of a ship. Other explanations suggest that the illusion may have been created by a bank of fog which is just reflecting moonlight. But really, what do you guys think about it? In the hump of our list, we have the La Chasse Galerie. La Chasse Galerie, also known as the Bewitched Canoe or the Flying Canoe, is a popular French Canadian tale of lumberjacks from camps working around the river of Gatineau who make a deal with the devil. The tale has roots in the French legend about a rich nobleman named Galerie who loved to hunt so much that he refused to attend the Sunday Mass. As punishment, he was condemned to fly forever through the night skies, chased by galloping horses and howling wolves. When French settlers arrived in Canada, they swapped stories with the natives and the tale of Gallery was combined with a First Nations legend about a flying canoe. The story goes that after a night of heavy drinking on New Year's Eve, a group of voyagers yearned to visit their sweethearts who were 100 leagues or 500 kilometers away. The only way to make such a long journey and be back in time for work the next morning is to run the Chase Gallery, which means making a pact with the devil so that their canoe can travel through the air to make their destination quickly. However, the travelers must not mention God's name or touch the cross of any church steeple as they whisk by in the flying canoe or else the devil will take their souls. The men promise not to touch another drop of rum and take their places in the canoe which begins to rise off the ground. They start to paddle and soon pass over the frozen Gatineau River, many villages and even the lights of Montreal. They eventually touch down near a house where New Year's Eve festivities are in full swing and they finally spend time with their sweethearts and still manage to get back in the morning. Although this is a sweet idea, I don't know if y'all would make a deal with the devil in in order to just get to a destination faster. Number four, the legend of Rose La Tulip. The story of Rose La Tulip is a French Canadian legend that has been passed down for centuries. This eerie tale tells the story of a young and carefree girl named Rose La Tulip who loved nothing more than just to dance. On the night of Mardi Gras, a mysterious stranger appeared at the La Tulip house and asked to dance with Rose. Without hesitation, Rose accepted the offer and danced with the stranger until the stroke of midnight. However, as the clock struck 12, the stranger revealed his true identity as the devil. According to some variations of the 
legend, the devil disappeared into the night, taking Rose with him to eternal damnation in hell. Others claim that the priest of the village intervened, saving Rose from the devil's grasp. Regardless of the outcome, the legend says that Rose would later enter a convent and die a few years after. This legend is one of the many examples in French Canadian folklore of girls dancing with the devil. These stories have been used as a cautionary tale for young girls, warning them of the dangers of dancing with strangers, particularly during Lent or on Sundays. The legend of Rose La Tulip is a chilling reminder of the consequences of succumbing to temptation and the dangers that can lurk in the shadows, even on the happiest of occasions. Number three, the Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel. The Fairmont Banff Springs Hotel has been supposedly haunted since 1888. One of the most famous ghosts seen at the hotel is the Ghost Bride, who is either seen on the main staircase or in the hotel's ballroom. The Ghost Bride story goes that on her wedding day, something startled her so bad and caused her to slip and fall. Some say that her heel got caught in her dress, or that her dress just got caught in a candle's flame and went up and engulfed her. Whichever story is true or not, what is known is that she passed away on that very staircase. Ever since, hotel staff and visitors claim to have seen the veiled figure walking up and down the stairs every single day. And on the other on the other hand, others claim seeing her in the ballroom dancing since she has never had the chance to dance with her husband. Man, this has to be one of the worst wedding disasters ever. Number two, the Old Finch Avenue Bridge. The Old Finch Avenue Bridge is a Bailey Bridge in Toronto that dates back to late October 1954. Ever since it was built, residents in the town of Scarborough have claimed it to be the most haunted bridge in the country. The most common legend about the bridge involves the disembodied screams of a young girl. The story goes that as you walk over the bridge at night, you may be greeted by shrill screams from beyond. There are variations of the legend, each providing different suggestions about how you can prompt the noises. Some say you simply need to be passing over the bridge at the right time of night, just as the sky is darkest. Others suggest that you should go to the center of the bridge and start singing the song, Happy Birthday. A few people People have remarked that you should yell happy birthday candy out into the darkness. However you choose to conjure up the potential spirit, the results are often the same, a high pitch and blood curdling shriek. But their experiences don't stop there. Pedestrians gathering up the strength to venture onto this bridge have heard footsteps, whispers and strange noises. Some people have even reported feeling a cold, eerie presence while walking on this bridge and this is why many people will try to avoid this bridge at all costs to this day. Number 1. Mussy The legend of Mussy and the mysterious creature said to reside in Muskrat Lake in Ontario has captivated locals and visitors for decades. Described as anything from a walrus to a three-eyed Loch Ness monster creature, the origins of the legend are said to date back to 1916 and some even claim that it was mentioned by Canadian pioneer Samuel de Champlain in the early 17th century. Mussy's name is a diminutive form of the name of its reported location, which is a large and deep lake near the village of Cobden. The lake is also home to another paranormal phenomenon where local legends state that an atomic energy of Canada bus driver saw an extraterrestrial spacecraft landing on a spot atop a hill and leaving here. There is indeed a dark colored circular outline on this hill where grass does not grow with no widely accepted cause. Residents have variously described Mussy's physical appearance as a walrus, a sturgeon or another fish or even a Loch Ness monster with three eyes with sharper teeth. Some claim that a single very old mussy or a member of its species arrived in the area then covered by the ocean about 10,000 years ago and that glaciers and later solid land masses built around it forming the lake and trapping the creature in it. Despite several attempts to find concrete evidence of this creature, including a search by author Michael Braley and friend Deanna Bean using sonar technology, scientists have surveyed the area and just found nothing. However, the definitive non-existence of a musty like creature is difficult to establish because some of the trenches in Muskrat Lake extend over 600 meters. So that's just food for thought when you're there. These are your top 10 scary Canadian urban legends that will keep you up. What did you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and some suggestions for our future videos. I'm your host Andrew and I hope you guys have a scary day.